Hello, it is I, the Games Reaper, and welcome to my video about why you should not buy Skyrim for the PlayStation 4. Now, the main reason why I say do not buy Skyrim for the PlayStation 4 is mainly because of the mod situation going on at Sony. Now, for the past few years or so, Sony have had very, very, very strict laws on, on their security. So in other words, they're not allowing any external assets to be used within the modding community as far as Skyrim is concerned on the PlayStation 4 and it's remained this way for the past few years. And to tell you the truth, that really, really pisses me off no end. So I'm telling you out of principle, if for no other reason at all, to not buy Skyrim on the PlayStation 4. Now, when Skyrim came out all those years ago back on the PlayStation 3 and PC, well, it was a mixed bag. On one hand, on the PC, it ran beautifully and you had ultra settings and so on and so forth. So back in the day when it first came out, Skyrim back in 2011, PC was always the place to go if you wanted the best possible Skyrim experience, that's just the way it was. This is not me being a PC elitist, it's just me telling the truth, and when it first came out on the PlayStation 3, especially Skyrim, when Skyrim first came out on the PlayStation 3, it was laggy, it ran terribly, and let's face it, even though the PlayStation 3 was an absolute powerhouse of a console when it came out all the way back in 2006, by the time Skyrim rolled along several years later, in 2011, the PlayStation 3 could hardly run Skyrim, and admittedly a lot of that was because it was poorly optimised when it first launched, and I believe it was a good year or two before it ran properly. Anyway, back to Skyrim on the PlayStation 4. Yes, uh, as far as the remaster goes, I believe it was a half-baked remaster. Now, if you could imagine basically a massive big pile of horse manure with a load of sprinkles sprinkled on top of it. That's what Skyrim was basically. <laughs> And that, that that just doesn't go for the PlayStation 4 version, that also goes for the Xbox One version as well. But at least with the Xbox One version, you could download all of the best graphics mods, which of course there aren't any graphics mods on the PlayStation 4 version, thanks to Sony not allowing any external assets to be used within the modern community, as I said earlier on. So if you are going to buy Skyrim, go for the Xbox One version, but for God's sake, don't go for the PlayStation 4 version, and it's not Beth Cedar's fault. It's not Beth Cedar's fault, folks. A lot of people think it is, but it isn't. It's Sony. It's their security laws, okay? Now, you may think that I feel quite strongly about this, especially considering that Skyrim is an old game. A lot of people don't care about Skyrim anymore, and I totally get that. I mean, we're on the cusp of the release of the PlayStation 5, which is going to be an absolute powerhouse of a console, right? And, uh, yeah. But don't be taken in by Skyrim on the PlayStation 4, folks, because it's an absolute rip-off. Not only is it a half-baked remaster for the PlayStation 4 and for the Xbox One, for that matter, to add insult to injury, you don't get any proper mods. I mean, the closest I got to having a proper graphics mod on the PlayStation 4 version of Skyrim was this mod which made the water look slightly better. It wasn't technically a graphics mod because it was using assets that were already in the game, but nonetheless it was the closest thing we got to a proper graphics mod on the PlayStation 4, and also another nice mod was this mod that increased the amount of grass that was in the game. But whilst us PlayStation 4 owners were clutching at straws, you know, we, we were absolutely desperately trying to look for these graphics mods all these years which just weren't appearing, the Xbox users had it really, really good because they actually had the mods that us PlayStation owners should have had as well. 
so definitely buy Skyrim Remastered either on the PC or the Xbox One but as far as the PlayStation 4 is concerned just forget it alright <laughs> and I think I might as well mention the fact that I'm just as angry as the rest of you when it comes to how tight Bethsaida is being when it comes to the information they're allowing us to know about the Elder Scrolls 6 and so on and so forth and I could say the same about Rockstar as well Having said that, there's been a big revelation recently with Grand Theft Auto 6. So, I would say that Bethsaida, out of all of the game developers, from my personal experience, are the worst for holding back information from the public. And it's all a part of their business strategy, because they like to build up a lot of hype. And by doing so, they actually end up making more money in the long run by withholding information. I know it's absolutely, absolutely despotic. But there's nothing I can do about it, okay? <laughs> anyway, I don't think there's anything else to add to this video, so I'm going to leave it there. So you know how I feel, man, about Skyrim on the PlayStation 4. Just let Skyrim go, honestly. Don't touch it on the PlayStation 4. It is a masterpiece, it's a great game, but this two things to remember from this video just before I leave. The first thing is that Skyrim is a half-baked remaster at best on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and the only reason why it's worth playing on the Xbox One is because of all of the great mods. And we're not just talking about graphics mods, we're talking about mods that add extra side missions, extra whole areas to explore, brand new NPCs to talk to. So it's you know, the difference between the PlayStation 4 version of Skyrim and the Xbox One version is like the difference between night and day. It's as simple as that. Right. Anyway, as you can see, I'm playing on Trails of Cold Steel 2. And uh, eventually, I'll, I will be doing a review of this game. And let me tell you, folks, it's an absolutely fantastic experience. Okay, well, I really better leave it there, okay? I, ho I hope you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one.